G'day folks, welcome to another episode of the Snowy's Camping Show. As always, joined by myself and my colleague Lauren. How are you going? Good, although I've just realised I have something stuck in my eye, okay, so well, carry while on. Okay, you do that, I'm just going to ask people to subscribe if they haven't done so already, either via YouTube or your favourite podcast app, and you can join in on the conversation at the Snowy's Camping Show <laughs> Facebook group. I'm still uh, going, got it, uh, I think. Where We'll be on there, uh, Lauren will be there once her eyes sorted out, um, yep. talking whatever we've talked about on this episode and future episodes, past episodes, uh, whatever you want to talk about camping. But today we're talking to Lauren about a recent trip she did to Kangaroo yeah. Island, which most people will know of, but it's an island just uh, south of, um, off the coast here in Adelaide, mm. uh, here in South Australia, sorry, um, about a- It's massive. What is it, a 45-minute boat trip, I think? I haven't done it for uh, a while. I think sort of w- when you get on the boat and then you're physically off the boat on the other side, yeah, it's about 45 yeah, minutes, okay. 50 minutes. Yeah, so it's quite, quite close really to Adelaide. You can yeah. actually see it from- um, the shores of South Australia and from certain spots on a clear day. You yeah, can see like Kangaroo bottom Island. of so York Peninsula and bottom of Fleuro Peninsula, you can yeah, see it. Yeah, it's quite clear, yeah. I think the actual boat trip's only about 20 minutes, so 25 minutes. Oh, is and it? And then it's sort of you've got the car loading and then you getting on and then when they sort of load up and then they shut it and the boat sort of gets out and turns itself right. around and goes yeah, off. Okay. It's so, been a while since I've been there. I've got friends that live over there and I think – Oh, I think I went for his 40th many mm. years ago now. Yeah. Um, but I haven't been there for a while, so I've got to get back. But what made mm. you choose um, Kangaroo Island? Well, I have wanted to go back for ages. I went in high school, I did this like wicked trip where you could sail at one of those old like 1800s wooden boats. Oh, fa- yeah. It was called the Failey. No way, I went on the Failey oh, when you? I was a kid. How yeah. good was it? Yeah. yeah so the Failey obviously went to, uh, I think it actually went into King's Coat. I don't know if it went to Penishaw, but anyway, but we were only there for a night and then we sailed back to Adelaide. So I didn't, I had a little bit of an experience of KI, but I haven't really been back. But my partner's born and raised on KI, left right. when he was in his mid to late teens or what have you. And he's not actually been back since. And then we just had some sort of uh, family stuff that had come up and it all sort of tied in together. And, and yeah. we were like, right, we're going to KI. So cool. How long did you go for? We went for a week. So we thought if we're going to go over there, we may as well make a week of it. Righto. So, yeah. Just, just you and your partner in your camper van? Just me and, Ditch the kids. Me and my partner. Yeah, yep. we, didn't, um, we didn't take the kids with us this time. And just because, you know, we have a shared, shared care arrangement with the kids that sort of worked out. Um, and, yeah, we sort of t- took a couple of extra days and, and – we were able to go kid free, which yep. I think was really good because we hadn't been there before, you know, plus the cost of going and things like that. Mm. It's We're definitely going to go again. We're definitely going to go with the kids, but I think it was a really awesome opportunity to have gone without them first. Yeah. Okay. Um, Cause the ferry is not cheap. Is it? If you, if you go to the full family, it's a, it's a, it's not, expensive it, trip. it's not cheap. It's with um, just the two of us. And our our van, which I think it's anything over five meters, mm-hmm. you have to call and book. You can't book online, so you have to go right. and get an actual quote. And your, I think ours was four point two four. I meant five point two four or something. Say, I thought it'd be over five. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's only just over five. Anyway, um, so the two of us and our van was like four hundred and sixty bucks or, yeah, or okay. something like that. And that's so, what are we? Um, April twenty twenty two now, so. I think it's yeah, been around about so, that price and that was in while. March. So I think um, end of March, I think we went, or early March. No, early March we went. Okay. So, yeah, that was recent. And then for Christmas, I got super excited because my mum and dad gave us a um, a present, and then the card was like, "Oh, I hope you enjoy your overseas holiday." And I was like, "Oh my god, overseas holiday! Uh, what is it?" And I opened it. It was a ceiling voucher. Yeah, so right. we <laughs> had a. <laughs> well, it was an overseas voucher. I can think it's overseas. It is overseas. <laughs> um, so yeah, we got uh, a ceiling voucher, which is a wicked present idea. If you know anybody who's thinking of possibly wanting to go to KI, it was quite um, often a barrier. I think that price just to get there. Yeah, because you travelled fairly. Um, like cost, yeah, not, not much. We tried to be just cost efficient and, and yeah, budget yeah. friendly and stuff generally yeah. with all of our trips. So yeah, it definitely was a huge um, cost. But I think as we were touching on before we started recording, having now experienced KI like pretty fully, and we had like a full on immersion that week of just mm. seeing and doing everything. I'm glad it's that expensive because it means that the people that are going there are people who are really genuinely invested reason. in going and they're they're going there for a reason and yep. 
you know, they're obviously making a conscious choice to, to put that money aside and dedicate that. And so therefore there's going to be a lot more appreciation. Yeah, cool. I think if it was a bit more accessible, it wouldn't be as awesome as it, as it is. You'd probably quickly become crowded because I reckon the whole island, I always thought about 150 Ks lengthwise and yeah. probably 50 odd Ks top to bottom. So I think it's, it's, not, a, lot, a, it's a lot bigger than you think it is. Like it's a lot bigger than I thought in my mind that it was in yeah, okay. terms of you think, oh, an island. But then if you actually look at it at the bottom of South Australia and you're like, oh, my gosh, it really covers that whole bottom of mm. the Gulf of Spencer. Is it the Spencer Gulf? Uh, is that our, our Gulf, the one that's up here? I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah. But, um, yeah, you sort of don't really necessarily think can, of it as being, of it as being as that island big. at the bottom. Yeah. 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 So it sounds like you packed your uh, – oh, how many days? Was it six days, I think? Well, saying? technically it was six days, yeah, because my partner has work, a, a solid work commitment on Thursday, okay, so it can't right be on. shifted. So we yep. went Thursday night and came back super late on a Wednesday. Okay. So you could probably talk for hours about all the stuff you did. We'll totally. try and just pluck out the best bits. <laughs> for sure, yeah. <laughs> but uh, starting the ferry journey, yep. we can't cover costs, but the actual – like the ferry is quite nice, a fair bit of space from, yeah, from memory. Definitely. It yep. can be pretty rough, I think. It can be. The The trip over was really rough. Oh, okay. Um, Like as in at the bottom of the wave, there's no horizon. And yeah. then at the top of the wave, you're like, where's the ocean? So it was very like – and so I think it was a little bit slower on the way over and the wind was insane. Yep. Like I'll have to get some photos um, to give to Larry, our, our yeah, um, producer, to like put it on. Just the hair just being like straight up in yeah, the air wow. because it's windy and my hair's just like, Ugh. but um, yeah. But on the way back it was it was flat as like barely a single wave and it was like, yeah, oh, right. the trip's over already. So, okay. yeah. Yeah, no, so if it's rough it can take a little bit longer. But so, mm. yeah, so it can be pretty rough across that straight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so costs we've covered, but um, that's sort of the ferry. But your like accommodation costs, you you like you said you had your camper van, so you stayed in your camper van. Yep. So you were sort of national parks council. Yeah, there's, like there's council not based there's there's loads of camp, council based um, campgrounds that have you know like in the city you get out and you do your parking meter thing. They've yep. got things like that to pay for your camping nights. But then there's also a few national park um, campgrounds, and you just pay through their website. Like you pull it's like book and pay online um, and most of those campgrounds do have signal. Like phone signal is a bit sketchy over there as a whole, like I'm on the Optus network, but yep. um, the campgrounds, you they did, there was signal there and they have little QR codes that you can just scan and cool. do that easily. So Yeah, right. That's awesome. And I probably from that particular experience I'd probably recommend not necessarily booking in advance because there was um, – it was pretty quiet when we went. Like there was, you know, not very many people around at all because we went I think two weeks after summer holidays and mm. school went back. Yeah. So the whole rush had been gone and, and you know, nobody's really holidaying after Christmas school holidays ending. But um, I reckon you'd probably want to book in busy times. Yeah. You'd get pretty busy. Yeah. I think you'd probably want to book in busy times. But even when we were there, we would rock up to a campsite, which in theory was only a quarter full based on how many sites had been booked and paid for, but we went there and there was only like one site free. Mm. And so so we hadn't booked or paid in advance because we were like, oh, there's loads of free sites, so let's pick which one we want first because obviously mm. having never been there before. Yep. Um, and then we'll, we'll pay for it once we've decided what number we want, but then you get there and more people there's, there's more the people there idea. than yeah. have actually booked and paid. And so technically you might have actually booked and paid for a spot that says it's free but it's not free. Yeah, or those people did the same as you, turned up late and booked last. So it was a quandary whether you're or not. Yeah, but I mean if I'm looking at my phone and I can see there's five people in these five different sites and it says that those five sites are all Free. available yeah, okay. and does that make that's yeah, sort yeah. of what I'm saying? Yeah. So I would I would probably, yeah, just rank, turn up to the campsite first and then okay. book and pay. Cool. And food? Yeah, there's plenty of places to get food. Did you have to carry Lots with you. I, I mean, we got, decided yeah. to take everything only because obviously, you know, my partner grew up there and that was a lot a fair while ago, but mm -hmm. it is also an island and the fees to get across for you as a tourist and even as a resident, those fees also apply to um well, the ca like what am I saying? Cargo yeah, like yeah. logistics, freight companies and things like that. So things on the island are gonna be more expensive, more expensive than yeah. what you'd pay in town. So we did all of our shopping at home. Yep. And then we also 
one of our very last stops to fill up with fuel, I think, was in Yank. Um, or Yankalilla, I should say, for people who aren't locals, <laughs> um, filled right up yeah, with okay. the diesel there. So we so tried mo- not to fill up. Most so- of the facilities, though, are you, you come in um, at Penishaw, yep. which is on the uh, eastern co- eastern end of the islands, and yeah. most of the main towns and, and things you would get fuel and shops like Kingscote. They're the on that sort of eastern, um, northeastern capital, side. I suppose. Yeah. Um, but there's, I guess, or uh, Pandana in the middle. Pandana. I don't know if there's, there's a soup. Many- there's a supermarket. There like Penn and Shaw has a, a big food land, sort of yeah. like a Drakesy food landing type thing. Kingscote has supermarkets. Um, I'm pretty sure from memory there's a supermarket in Pandana. So if it's not like if you forget something, you can't. It's not get that, it there. And it's not it's, that far to it's go. It's not that far to go. Yeah. Even if you're on the complete opposite side of the island, you might drive like 45 minutes to an yeah, hour. Okay. So you'd you probably, know, max. you probably at least want to, if you're buying stuff over there, stock up at, at Kings Code or, or on the east and then yeah. you probably got enough food yeah. to get you through like, it and back you again. You know, for example, um, I did all of the shopping but I probably didn't bring as much snacky stuff as I thought. So we did stop at Penn and Shaw, just, you know, get a block of chocolate and yeah, nice. some chippies and, you know, some snacky stuff. Oh. And my partner, um, Jess, also forgot to pack a jumper. And so <laughs> we did – we were actually able to go into King's Coat and get him a, a jumper in there. So yeah, okay. you're not you're not screwed if, if you forget something. You know what I mean? All right, let's try and uh, – I'm going to ask what are your favourite places and I know you're going to list a lot. If I if I let you loose with that question, so let's break it down it's into bits and pieces. So you, you come well, in a pen ashore, right? Yeah. What I want to say though is just because I have this book in front of me, which okay. is the Kangaroo Island, uh, like tourism book guide thing, which yep. you can get at the Sea Link, and it's got this um. Just hear the sound, the crinkling sound of pages turning here. Flicking it, through your well-used yeah, brochure here. Yeah, it is. The, the centre bit has this awesome big map and that's all we use. We didn't even bother using our phones. But they have, you know, this section of seven regions in seven days, for example, and it sort of just breaks the island up into different regions and categories if you want to do it, okay, you know, well, of each region in a day. And that's sort of roughly what we worked off. But you could even go, oh, okay, you know, I'm only going to be there for two or three days. And, you know, it's a, it's pretty good. You, Yeah, it's a pretty comprehensive well, let's, option. So let, Let's break your trip down for a few minutes on each of these sections. So starting at okay. the very east, you've got Penishore and they call the Penishore and Dudley Peninsula is what they, they label it yeah, at. Yeah, Penishore, so Dudley near, Peninsula. It's near where you come into the island on the ferry. Mm-hmm. So we didn't do Favourite a huge amount over here. Apparently there's heaps of wineries there. I probably wouldn't say any favourite spots necessarily, um, but there is Antichamber Bay. Yep, nice campground. Um, yeah, which is a nice campground and that's um, a part of Lashmar Conservation Park. There's yep. a river that comes out there. It's a really nice beach. Um, yeah, so that's pretty neat. And then there's got a, there's Cape Willoughby Lighthouse yep. there, which is good. Um if you know, especially if you've got kids that are into history and things like I that. I think there used to be a cafe there. I don't know if it's still there. I'm not I sure if it's still there. We didn't okay. technically go in. Just on that though, there's a lot there's like a couple of big lighthouses. Um and I think Cape Border and Remark uh down at Admiral's Mart. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. Yep. But I think Cape Willoughby is one of the ones where you can actually pay and get like a proper tour through all the houses and things right. like that. So okay. might might be worth doing if you've got kids that are interested in all that. All right. So moving across then, you've got yep. a little narrow sort of I don't know if you call it an East Smith or something, where kind of the east end of the island joins the rest of it and you come into the American River area, which is between Penishore and Kingscote, which are the two yeah. sort of big towns. We actually did this um on our last day um, because we sort of cut down to the south coast section. But in this little sort of American River area, there is um, Pelican Lagoon and there's a couple of little walks around there. Mm -hmm. And then there's uh, Mount Tisby, which apparently has been renamed, I think. Yeah, th- I say <laughs> I said Thisbe and it drove Jess mad. He yep. was like, "It's Thisbe," yeah. um, but I think th- it has been recently renamed in the last maybe couple of years or something mm-hmm. to Prospect Hill or Pioneer Hill or something okay. along those lines. Um, but it's like basically the biggest huge Sandrine Mountain I've ever seen, and you can just go up the top there, and it's awesome because it's at that point is where one side of the island, like the north and the sa- the south part of the island is like maybe a a few two Ks co- co- or something. Or two, yeah. it's it's an, I can't even remember. I've got a photo of that and you can actually see, see just behind me and Jess's head either side of the yeah. island. So yeah, I'll cool. have to get that one up too. Um, and then along actual um, 
uh, like American River or I think it's – is it – no, it's not near PM Bay. I'm just having a really quick look here. Yeah, the place where they, they call American River near Pelican Lagoon and things like that. American River is actually really sweet. There's a couple of big like hikes there that you can do along the coast, mm-hmm. so they were really good too. Cool. So moving along, if we follow your route, you went south yeah, first. Yeah, so, so then south we did coast, south which is first. A big sort of, you get into more open area here. Mm. So you probably did a super, stack in here. So what are your highlights from that section? We did a stack. It's super rugged, um, really, really beautiful down there. We didn't hang around and I still can't work out how to say Ganthume. Ganthume. I think we looked it Gwanthume. up. Gwanthume. I can't, I can't think. Anyway. So we, French. Yeah. It? Um, it's probably worth a look and apparently there's a nice big hike that you can do around the bottom of the Cape there that we didn't do. Mm-hmm. But in that South Coast section, um, there's Murray Lagoon and if you go sort of towards the end of winter or spring and there's water in there, that would be amazing, especially if you're a bird watcher. Yeah, right. There's a couple of awesome little walks in there. Um, and that's, some, that's where you camped, I think. That, and yeah. we camped in there. That's yep. a really nice um, new campsite that's, that's done up in there, uh, national parks. I've done that one. Amazing cooking facilities, all that kind of jazz. Okay. Um, Seal Bay is also in this section, which is a massive tourist thing, but yep. we decided not to do it just because we were on a bit of a budget and we all like, oh, seals, you know. It, it, we might, it's something we might have done with the kids, mm. but we just decided not to. Instead, we went to Bales Beach, which is just to the east of that, and that was yep. incredible beach, like thousands of starfish, just like yeah, wow. insanely beautiful. Okay. Um, Vivon Bay is also down the That's south. That's a beautiful that spot. That was really beautiful. Yep. There's like a cool huge rock pool in there. and Crystal clear waters. Crystal clear waters. Yep. Just amazing. There's also Little Sahara. And that's the only real touristy thing that we did in terms oh, of sand, like a paid touristy experience. Yeah. yeah, that was the sandboarding. That was 10 out of 10, so fun. Yeah. And it's just I think you pay like this flat fee to get to access it. And yep. I think I, I might be wrong, but um, I'm – it's just a flat fee. Like there were two of us, but then there was a group of eight of us that came behind and they were all together and their entry fee was just a flat entry fee as okay, well. But then you pay per um, like sandboard or per toboggan, right. you also hire on top. So okay. um, that was wicked. Cool. I, I would go back there tomorrow if I could. It was just you so much fun. Yeah. Fast paced. Uh, there's a video which I might give um, permission for, to go <laughs> so to go on it. the podcast. No, it's me burning down this sand dune and nearly – literally losing my life in a bush. Oh, um, I've got and- visions of your head on top of some professional sandboarder yeah. going down the hill. You're that'd trying to be, claim it as being you. But that'd be pretty cool. Anyway, so on from there. Yeah. Um, and then on from there, we just basically went and had a look down at Hanson Bay. Um, so we're getting into the West End now. Yeah, and which that's is, sort of like the end of the, it, really. When they talk about Flinders Chase National Park, which is kind of the, that's the, down the, the West big end. thing in WA. Uh, KI, sorry, not yep. WA. That's the West End of yeah. the Kangaroo Island. And the reason sort of why we did it this way mm. was because at the time of year that we were going, sort of end of Feb, early March, is when the season starts to shift a little bit and it becomes quite windy. Mm-hmm. And so we thought – you know, as the week progresses, it might become windier. So we chose to do the south coast first because right. that, that gets hammered. Um, it was still pretty windy, right? It was still pretty windy. The first couple of days were pretty windy, but the rest of it wasn't too bad. It's probably, I think so, you go there expecting it to be windy most of the time yeah. down that far. But there were a couple of places like Kelly Hill Conservation Park, for example, which is like these huge big caves and whatever. Yep. That we're still, what are we now? I think we worked out we're like two or two and a bit years on from the fires and mm. they're still shut. Yeah, okay. Not open again. So there were a, quite a few things that I really wanted to see and do, like hikes and stuff that mm-hmm. I thought were open that weren't. So that was a bit disappointing and probably something to bear in mind is that if you're someone like me and you want to do l- less of the cottage industry stuff, like less lavender farm, honey farm, or tourist, yep. tourist stuff, and you want to do more of the adventure and nature stuff, I'd, I'd probably put off maybe another year. Yeah, okay. Because you, so you were limited in the West End in Flinders Very Chase as well. Where there's a lot of inaccessible yeah. closed space yep. in there at the moment because yeah. of the fires still. Because of the fires, and then apparently um, there was a lot of access roads into areas that you that were supposedly supposed to be open, but were closed because of flooding and stuff. And so I'm just right. imagining, you know, if you've got insane bushfires mm. that have gone through two years ago. You've lost all that vegetation that's helping maintain, yeah, you know, your soil yeah. quality and and keeping it all together. And then you have these big rains, and it's just erosion. Mm. So, 
So what was your highlight then in the West End around the Fender's Chase? And, and you know, um, I know you sort of scooted around most of it and went up to so was it Cape Border. Cape Border, yeah, that was the end. The West End, like Cape Border was – the northern end sort of, of the west. yeah we didn't do that in the west end the west end was basically flinders chase national park i would say the highlight of that was because we didn't have kids we got up at like 5 30 in the morning mm-hmm. just as the sun was starting to come and drove into the national park and stopped on Bunker Hill, which is this insane lookout over all of Flinders Chase and had a steaming hot cup of tea and then buffed down to Remarkable Rocks. And we were at Remarkable Rocks by maybe half past six yeah, okay. pr- prior right. to seven. And no one else was there. And no one else was there. And yeah. it was just a cold, misty morning. And it oh, just, cool. you know, it was just really, really magical. Just yeah, had this right. awesome vibes. N- literally not a soul. A couple of little wallaby kangaroo things around, but not another person inside. Okay. And it was the best. Hardest thing getting out of bed, but so rewarding once you're up so and you see that time rewarding. of the morning in these places. Yeah. Yeah. And then obviously Admiral's Arch is down there and that's really cool as well because okay. all the massive seal colonies and, you know, and I think that's why we ended up being glad that we didn't fork out the money for Seal Bay mm. because you can see a thousand or more seals yep. from Admiral's Arch. You okay. just can't sort of walk down and, and be yeah. super close to them. So so they're the very touristy spots there. Um, yeah. Then you scooted around up to Cape Border again, which is now getting into, I don't know what sec- what they call that, the north north uh, something in your – so Actually, that's still sort of in west the west end. end. Yeah, yeah, coming across to the north So coast. Cape Border was in the but west end. Without going into too much detail, I think you got scared by a dead snake up there or something. Yeah. I did. <laughs> Being naughty, a, a, I was doing a, what I call a rebel hike, which is where you ignore the trail close signs yeah, because you think you know better. Yeah. Um, you had a staring and, competition with a dead snake. Yeah. The snake won even in yeah. the fly was landing on its eye apparently. Yeah, so. exactly. Um, uh, snakes win any time, dead or alive, they win, <laughs> okay? Just it is how it is. So a bit of a uh, wild walk at Cape Border and then back across to the section they call the – oh, did you go down through the middle then, Pandana? We, we, we popped into Pandana just to do a quick fuel stop towards the end of the week because yep. we'd done so much driving and we couldn't do a full tank, unfortunately. Um, but probably, we didn't spend a lot of time in what they call the heartland or the Pandana, se- Pandana section. I think it's there's, good for kids. There's like wildlife park and there's a honey um, – Yeah, there's like a wild life park there's like some horse riding there's wineries um yeah there's a bit more of that sort of cottage industry stuff but um no in the north north coast along the coast there probably the most um well-known one is stokes bay um There's quite a lot of beaches along there like Emu Bay, Smith's Bay, um, but Emu Bay is sort of the main one, Stokes Bay. Snelling Beach is incredibly beautiful, just mm-hmm. really picturesque. <laughs> picturesque. <laughs> God. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, picturesque. You if you fumble through that one without <laughs> saying anything or trying to correct you. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, coming in through Constitution Hill, I don't think I've seen a view like it. It mm. was just ridiculous. And Western River Cove. A lot of those beaches are probably really famously known or well-known because of Instagram. And Stokes Bay for me was a bit of a – miss like a hit miss type thing in terms of the fact that the walk in it's the one where you sort of walk in through these big rock boulders and sort of cave things to get to this beach and it was really cool but it wasn't to me it wasn't anything like massively special over any other beach so but I reckon the highlight of that whole section was Western River Cove, Mm -hmm. but do exploring. Don't just take the beach as you sort of come out from the river. Don't just take take it at face value. Explore over the rocks, head head west, head east, get your shoes on, clamber, adventure, go find rock pools and awesome, awesome stuff. There's also a little waterfall hike in there. That was awesome. Um, But what is good at Stokes Bay is a rock pool cafe, literally the greatest seafood cone (laughs) I've ever eaten in my life. What is a seafood cone? It it was like this, it comes out as this cone and it's packed with chips and salad and then you have like scallops and fish and but literally the best thing that I've ever eaten in my life. And I've eaten a lot of salt and pepper squid because I'm one of those people that only orders exactly the same thing everywhere you go. That's all she does, salt and pepper squid. That's why I like her, but there you go. Um, Not open on Monday, just bear that in mind. So the theme we're getting here is definitely the busy you liked the most are the 
where the the road is less travelled. Yeah, I think I think so, and I think also. Um, when you do see things on Instagram and, you know, geo tags and, and stuff that's that's flogged a lot through different tourist and travel destinations, it removes the ability for you to experience it in and of yourself organically yeah. from the beginning. You saw, It's sort you of go like you're going there with an expectation yeah. that's already been lined up by another person's experience and potentially also imagery and things that Touched have been over-stylized and, yeah. and whatever. Yep. So I think for me – the best bits were the bits where I I didn't have any expectation and I could genuinely just be blown mm. away with with what I saw. So I think I've been to plenty of places um, in the trips I've done where you have a, a shiny brochure and a picture and you think, oh, I yeah. want to go there, and you end up going there and it's still an awesome spot, right? But you kind of think, quite like you look at the picture and think, yeah, that's it. But yeah, obviously it was they picked the day to take the photo and yeah. enhance the colours or something a little more. So yeah, probably does put a little. D- not really a dampener, but I know what you mean. You go yeah. with an expectation and it's at 95% instead of 100 and you kind of – there's 5% of like, oh, it's not quite like the picture. Yeah, and I think the other thing that really struck me was that um, especially down at at um, <coughs> Bales Beach as an example mm-hmm. is that in the time that we were down there, we probably saw six, seven, eight, nine different sort of groups of people come down or, or partnerships or car loads that sort of just walked down onto the beach, sort of stood there, had a bit of a look around and then just went back to the car mm. and left. And it's like we actually spent hours there walking as far to the end of the beach as we could, mm-hmm. you know, walking a little bit around the headland, going under these arches, exploring. And it was the what we found and what we mm. saw and what what sort of we experienced there was – Probably one of the most incredible days that we had on the whole island and one of, you know, the top five highlights. But that's missed out by yeah. other people who just potentially are expecting to just, I don't, I don't know. I think yeah, too some, many people do it. Yeah, it, too many it. people do it. But I think <laughs> also potentially when you're travelling, you need to have Time. a sense of adventure. And yeah, time. And, don't and allow just- yourself time. Maybe don't just head to a schedule. Don't just do Just give yourself time to explore it and give yourself time to be curious in nature. And, Absorb and it. Yeah. Yeah, be, you know, almost try and sort of rekindle that childlike interest in the mm. world because, um, yeah, there's just so much stuff that that can be missed. I think and- better ex- absorbing more places than just ticking off. Uh, absorbing less places, sorry, yeah, than just putting a tick against more places. Yeah, yeah. and it's definitely good to be well researched, and it's definitely good to know beforehand the places mm. the way you think you might like to go. But, um, but yeah, just be really, just be really open to to your experience. And cool. I think, especially if you are like me and you are somebody who is more more interested in the natural environment as opposed to wanting to go to cafes and yeah. or you know farms or stuff like that. Um, yep. Yeah, be so open to the experience. I think this is, we're now into sort of the last section, I think, which is back yeah. towards uh, the Kingscote, Kingscote area. and surrounds, yep. which um, would have been maybe one of your last stops before you headed back. Yeah, we mostly sort of did um, that Kingscote stretch back to Peninsula, mostly in, in one day in total. Um, but there's loads of wineries and things around there that we didn't go to, but that's very much that sort of section is very much um, – Really it's, touristy and in cottage industry it's the heart sort of, of focus. The, sort of where that's right, happens, and you could probably come for a whole week and only do that Kings Coat Pen and Shore section if oh, that's okay. your that's your vibe of just stopping and going to different things every, mm-hmm. every day. We stayed at a little place called Duck Lagoon, which is on the Signet River. Um, there's nothing to sing and dance about. Mostly just like a big council car park thing that you park there. Um, but yeah, Kings Coat is huge. Um, as I said, there's Emu Bay up that top corner there. Um, there's, you know, there's like the original King's Coat landing site where they first, you know, Found had it. their first settlement and yep. things like that. Um, lots of oysters and, yeah, as I said, lots of industry over that sort of side of things. a bit of den- things. denser with things. Yeah. So, um, so that's your itinerary. Yeah. Uh, so if, if you uh, – <clears throat> We'll go sort of places that are a bit hit and miss. So people going there thinking, oh, this is what I do because the brochure says I would go there. Yeah. What's your top sort of hit and miss thing, the thing you had big expectations for that didn't quite deliver? I'd say Stokes Bay, which which okay. I'm a bit sad about because 
I would go there just for the cafe and not bother going to the beach. Oh, do you think that's because of the Instagram thing you talked about before? Yeah, or? I think potentially, yes. Yeah, okay. Like it didn't um, – I think I had a lot more expectation for it than, than what it, the reality of it was. Mm-hmm. Um, so must-sees then? What are the things – if you went over there again, you've seen it yep. before, but you would definitely go yeah, – let's take the Stokes Bay Cafe out of the question. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> What are uh, the Rock other, Pool Cafe. other places you would go to uh, uh, just again and again each time you were there? I would absolutely climb to the top of Mount Tisby okay, or, or Mount Prospect Hill just because I thought that was so awesome up the top there and everything that you could see. I would 100% go to Bales Beach again. Mm-hmm. I would 100% do that bottom of um, Flinders Chase with the Remarkable Rocks, Admiral's right. Arch, Weir's so really Cove. Is, but, it's touristy but, but it's really worth it. But, but I think it was only worth it for us because we went so early in the morning. And okay. I think by the time we left Admiral's Arch, there was maybe – there were people starting to turn, pull up then. Okay. So there was maybe only two or three other car loads when we were doing Admiral's Arch, like actively there. Okay. But that was that was awesome. So get there early. Yeah. So what about um, something that you were pleasantly surprised by? Didn't, didn't expect it, didn't plan it, but just went, gee, I'm glad we did that. Um. The sandboarding because we hadn't, that. yeah, because it was something that I just thought, oh, you know, maybe I should do that. And because I have, um, I'm the eldest in my family and my folks and my younger siblings went to KI. I think I might have been like a late teenager and mm. sort of too cool to do family yeah, trips okay. then. Um, but we have a family video that will forever live in our in our hearts and minds and, and MP3, four video files of my dad going on a sandboard down the sand dune yeah, right. and stacking it and then the sandboard like flinging off his feet and sort of corkscrewing through the air and just as he sits up, it scones yeah, him on the head oh, and right. just like knocks him flat. And so because of that it's experience, funniest home videos yeah, moment. funniest home videos <laughs> moment, but because of that, I re- I thought I really, it's you know, just want to go there yeah, and yeah. there was a connection to it. I but I didn't that. expect to love it as much as I did, okay. did and didn't expect to think it was as awesome because it is a tourist thing and I generally am not into that sort of stuff. So, right. yeah, that okay. was a big, big surprise. All right. I'm nearly out of questions, but I want to know just one funny story. There's, there's got to be something just funny, silly. Mm. The ones If you had to tell one story that grab, grabs people's interest the most from your trip, what would it be? We know about oh. the snake, the dead snake standoff that you had. Dead snake standoff. Which was just lying across the I trail don't apparently. Know but Lauren if, froze waiting for the snake to move and the well, snake because was I was, was dead, Snakes but. are terrible and okay. I was really – it was anyway. eyeballing me with its dead cold eyeballs. Yeah, okay. Anyway, anyway um, look, I don't have one single story. I don't think okay. um, Sorry, folks. that was funny. <laughs> I mean, my partner did come a cropper at Little Sahara and it was l- right in front of me and I was right at the bottom of the sand dune and I, it, it, I think I nearly wet my pants yeah. with laughter, <laughs> but I didn't get it on, on camera. Um, hmm. Just a good trip all yeah, round. Yeah, hey? just, just a good trip all yeah. round, I think. Um. There were three nights in a row that we had possums in our van, though. Oh, okay. <laughs> and that was on three separate you, in three separate locations. Because you've left it open for the airflow. To left come it in. open yeah. for the airflow. Waking up in the middle of the night. One night I had two possums in there at Western River, and then another night oh, really? at Duck Lagoon we okay. had one. And you know, so there's possums yeah, yeah. and and one at Harvey's return. Just getting close with nature. Yeah, just getting close with nature. <laughs> but yeah, no nah, biggest awesome. takeaway for Ki: explore, just yeah. explore, and give yourself room to. Just take take it at your own pace, and if something grabs your interest, then stay with it. Don't feel rushed by a yeah, schedule. Nice. Just just immerse yourself in it because it was insanely beautiful. Well, that's awesome. I, I've been my wife and I, or the whole family, have said we're going to go to KI. I don't know how many times because we've got friends that live over there, not far out of Kings Coast. So yeah. We've got a place we can stay. And it's, I think it's one of those things where it's right there, and you just keep saying you'll do it, and you never do it. But we actually need to to do it, and maybe yeah. you've inspired us to just do it finally. Um, well, we have been there before, but we haven't driven quite like you have. And I think yeah. having your own car and getting around. I'll give you some a lot tips. Of justice. All right. We just did. Yeah. Maybe some secret tips. Secret. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anything else you want to add? Nah, I think I'm all good. I'm happy to answer anyone's questions yeah. as well. If, if anybody's got any questions or 
wants to pick my brains a bit more or ask me more about some yeah. things because obviously we're just such a limited time and you know me I'll talk till the cows come home yeah and you're really disappointed to come back so yeah I, I was I literally yeah. cried yeah. on on um, the beach at, at Pennington because I didn't want to go home <laughs> Penishaw. 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 I, Pennington. I said Pennington. Where is Pennington? I don't know. That's what I was South, thinking. South Southeast, maybe. South Australia, southeast, yeah, like I'm down not Limestone sure. it's Coast. Not okay either. It's not on okay. Uh, anyway. Penishaw. Oh, yes, I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. Penishaw. Anyway. Sat on the beach at Penishaw, crying because I didn't want to come home. If you've got any questions for Lauren about a KI trip, you can uh, ask us on the. Snowy's Camping Show Facebook group. Uh, she'll be more than happy to answer your questions. Absolutely. And as we said before, if you haven't done so, please subscribe so you get all of our latest content either on YouTube where you can watch us or your podcast app where you can just listen if you don't want to look at us. <laughs> <laughs> your beautiful got. face? No. <laughs> that was awesome. I loved hearing about it. Thanks, Lauren. Cool. No all worries. Right. Thanks, Catch guys. you later. We'll see you next time.